Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are embarking on a grand trip in Kerbal Space Program, but we are starting out with the simulations of what we ultimately want to happen. This bold silhouette sliding out from behind the planet Jewel is one part giant heat shield and one part giant mod, which I have downloaded and, well, as you can see, it is a submarine. Now this of course will be immediately familiar to anybody that's ever read XKCD. Uh, <laughs> one of the What If episodes includes a section on the most Kerbal spacecraft ever, and includes a screenshot of this. It then also links to one of my videos where I try to build an aircraft powered by nuclear bombs. Now many people ask me to try and build a sub and drop it into Jupiter and of course never had the time because I was doing other series but I found this mod and it is a three and a half thousand ton submarine. It includes a whole bunch of fuel and well physics which barely works. <laughs> Using a couple of engines I am very very slowly dropping the orbit down so the periaps passes inside the Julian atmosphere so we can investigate what really goes on in there. Obviously, I cheated this vehicle up there using HyperEdit just so I could get an idea of whether this thing would even descend through the atmosphere without melting into some sort of crazy Kerbal Julian mess of materials. Because let's face it, that's what happens when you drop something into the Jovian atmosphere. I mean, you know, submarines are designed to float in liquids, right? In water, very specifically. And the atmosphere of Jupiter does actually turn to something that approximates liquid at a high enough pressure. However, at that point, of course, the submarine is squished and melted and disintegrated and becomes all sorts of fascinating materials that material scientists would no doubt love to write papers on. Also, being that it's three and a half thousand tons and one single part, it turns very slowly. And with a heat shield of several hundred tons, um... Yes, yeah, struts just sometimes are not up to the task. Every now and then during time acceleration, something attached to this hull will magically break. And then of course when the time acceleration stops, chaos looms and things start to spin and explode. And this is left descending through the atmosphere of Jewel without a heat shield to protect it. But even without the glitchy physics, we still have the problem of turning something that is so massive. Even with a raise of reaction control thrusters, the whole thing just doesn't really want to find a happy mean. If I turn on the SAS and set it going prograde, it just kind of oscillates around this mean and doesn't really end up pointing the correct direction. And on top of this, you pretty much need to run it at four times time acceleration so you can do this without getting bored and wanting to slit your wrists with the extremely tedious controls. I turned off stability control and started flying it myself and I was managed, able to get it to point roughly in the correct direction so it shows that it is at least aerodynamic stable, or at least this configuration is somewhat aerodynamically stable. Entering Jules' atmosphere is, of course, way harder than entering the atmosphere of Kerbin or Eve. You know, the velocities are twice that what you would expect from a Kerbin re-entry. And, well, the temperatures aren't going to be twice as high, or the thermal flux, which is the important part, isn't going to be twice as high. The thermal flux is going to be several times higher because there is not a linear relationship between the velocity and the amount of heat being generated. It's going to accelerate, or the thermal flux actually goes up higher and faster. And if you think about it, this is really just the Oberth effect, right? Oberth effect basically says that uh, the energy change with a change in velocity is proportional to the speed. So if you're feeling the same deceleration, at a, a higher speed, you're going to be getting much higher thermal uh, energy getting dissipated. Anyway, we got to about 4.5 kilometers per second, 120 kilometers before the tail from this tore off. And the thing still remains stable. In fact, it remains so stable that despite me trying to roll this, the thing doesn't move. It is basically stuck in this orientation despite my best efforts to at least try to roll it to a reasonable attitude. Now, of course, in real life, going into Jupiter is even harder still, because Jupiter, you're going to be hitting the atmosphere at about 60 kilometers per second. The 
atmosphere probe from the Galileo spacecraft lost almost half of its mass and apparently almost burned through. Now, to try and get some roll control, I think, hey, let's try and use those main engines, the big, you know, vector engines with huge amounts of uh, thrust gimballing. Again, no control at all. This thing just does not want to turn just at the huge mass. I'm not really sure what's holding because the rotation stability should not be really constrained by the atmospheric effects. I think perhaps I'm just being far too impatient, but these are design challenges which I will have to overcome. We're going to have to build this into a spacecraft that can fly, and potentially, maybe we could try building an aircraft. And hey, if you really want to go full Kerbal with this, maybe I can find a modern version of the Orion Nuclear Pulse engine. I mean, just delivering this to Joule is obviously going to be a major challenge, but if I can make an aircraft that flies around a nuclear sub, then this is going to be something truly fantastic to behold, but we're going to see where this goes. We're going to see where the build happens, but we all know where this is going. This is going straight down thanks to the force of gravity. Although apparently the force of aerodynamics has decided that it wants to keep the heat shield for itself. And that is actually a very useful part of this experiment because you can see the velocity is now rising. Now that we have lost the aerodynamic drag of that heat shield, we have gone up back beyond Mach 2, and we're heading up close to Mach 3 as we fall through the cloud layer and look into the sky, trying to catch a glimpse of the sun for the last time before we really disappear into the depths of Jewel and become part of its greater chemical makeup. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! Wait, what the heck? A explosion. Yeah, something very weird happened with the altimeter there. I'm sure it just broke because of the pressure. Anyway, trying to actually make this move on the runway. Well, I started with some few, a few experiments. There are a couple of places where you can attach engines, so I thought, oh, let's just attach some basic jet engines. Uh, it didn't move very fast, and even when it was moving, it did have a tendency to explode the runway. Putting on bigger jet engines, well, they, uh, they of course worked a little better. Another problem that we have is the wheels. They seem to keep wanting to clip through the runway, and that makes steering... Well, they, none of these wheels have steering to start with, but <laughs> the fact that they are dragging through the runway is probably not helping me pick up speed as I move down the runway. Obviously, what we're going to need is more boosters. But this is moving fast enough that I think we might be able to get it to the ocean, where we can actually perform some other tests. This is, after all, a submarine. And we'd like to know, does it float, or rather, does it sink? <laughs> How does it behave? Do I need other mods? Well, uh, <laughs> I love the way the runway just exploded as we left it behind. You know, it's like badass submarine escaping from the base as everything's exploding around it. You know, you can imagine like enemy aircraft flying over trying to shoot it as it's diving for the water. You know, it's like one of those movies where they dive off the boat and the guns shoot at them. And down we go into the water and n don't float. And things start to break. We're going faster though because we're going downhill. Catching air at over 100 kilometers per hour in a submarine which is powered by jet engines, or was powered by jet engines until they exploded themselves. Again, this episode is really about collecting information, problem, and figuring out how to solve them, right? It's all about collecting design data through simulations. Losing control of it, and we do the dramatic into a roll! Ah, oh, wow. Yes, look at it, go! It's like it's been shot by our hero. Things explode, and what I really like is that the landing gear that it was riding on is now floating up to the surface as this continues to sink. There are ballast tank options on this, but they don't actually appear to do anything. So I do have a fair amount of work cut out for me. But we will get there. We will drop this submarine into Jewel, and we will find out what's at the bottom and various other things. But that will be in other episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Dive safe.